A rabbi in North Jersey who stood shoulder to shoulder with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. throughout the civil rights movement is thankful he got to see the ball drop for 2022. The 92 year old, known as the most arrested rabbi, recently learned he has stage four colon cancer and believes he's living his final days. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner spoke with him. He may be too weak to stand, but the spirit of Rabbi Israel Dresner is strong. His Wayne, New Jersey home surrounded with memories of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I've always been very optimistic. I try to follow Dr. King's course. He always felt that uh, we're making progress and we have to continue to make progress. Dr. King appeared in my pulpit in Springfield in January 1963 for the first time. King visited Dresner's synagogue twice. The friendship started in 1962 when Dresner visited King in an Albany, Georgia jail cell. Months later, King, who called the rabbi Sai, wrote, We are counting on you to discern some methods of action which contribute to our national problem in race relations. Dresner had already been arrested as part of the Tallahassee 10, interfaith freedom riders who challenged Challenged segregated buses and sat together at a segregated airport restaurant. Uh, look here, you're all private property. In 1964, he was arrested again, organizing the largest mass arrest of rabbis in history outside a segregated hotel in St. Augustine, Florida. Were you afraid when you showed up there? Well, I, I, I always had some fear. Every person has an obligation to try to make a contribution to making the world a little better place. The following year, Dresner delivered the prayer on Turnaround Tuesday in Selma, Alabama at King's behest. It was one of several marches for voting rights. Dr. Ralph David Abernathy, best friend and mentor of King, prayed to his right. His daughter, Donzele, remembers Dresner speaking at her church. Honestly, I believe that he is one of the unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. It ended up helping to shape my life so that now I live today in an orthodox Jewish community. But I feel at home because um, this was the world that we grew up in. Bishop Mitchell Taylor of Queens reflects on how Dresner shaped social justice movements today. You know, one voice can speak, but it can easily be ignored. But when united voices speak, it can never be ignored. Dresner's daughter and son are producing The Rabbi and the Reverend, a documentary they call a mile marker on the never-ending march towards equality. We want to use the film to help reforge the, the Black Jewish Alliance that he was such a critical part of. You know, we're blessed to be able to, you know, to do this for him and to do it with him while, while we still can. Rabbi Dresner says throughout the pandemic, he's been able to draw strength from services that have been broadcast on television. Those services were from Central Synagogue in Midtown East, so he made one last in-person Torah blessing there this month. His children also took him for a final pastrami sandwich at Katz's Deli and one last Broadway show. How do you want to be remembered? Well, I want to be remembered as somebody who not only tried to keep the Jewish faith, uh, but also to invoke the Jewish doctrine from the Talmud, which is called Tikkun Olam, repairing the world. And I hope that I made a little bit of a contribution to making the world a little better place. In Wayne, New Jersey, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News.